Hello everyone, this is a video about how to program the Kelly controllers. Okay, uh, but before we start uh, on doing so, I want to just uh, show you a little comparison between some of the controllers and the, and the Kelly controller. Uh, the major advantage of uh, Kelly controllers has, is that they are very uh, small and light for their power. Okay, I have put here two in comparison. Okay, and this one here it's a 25 to 50 amps uh, controller. This other one is a 50 to 100, while this one, the Kelly controller, is from 80 to 200 amps. So that means with a lot of much power, it's uh, much smaller and lighter than the other two ones. But uh, in other hand, these two controllers are designed for electric bicycles or motorcycles or similar vehicles. And that means that they are very easy to install. Just uh, They are just like almost plug and play. You just connect them and they probably work perfectly and you just have to change some little parameters that you can do it through their uh, own screens to uh, change the behavior of the of the of the controller and the motor while the kelly controller you need to connect it to a computer and to change and to work in a lot of parameters to make it work uh, properly for your needs that's another advantage uh, of this controller if you are not using it for uh, electric bicycles or, so, or or a motorcycle then uh, you have a lot of uh, parameters that you can um, tune in order to make it work properly while the other ones will not uh, let you uh, do it because they it's not possible to modify them so let's start with the programming of the kelly controller in order to set up the controller, uh, we are going to connect just only the necessary uh, cables that is necessary for the programming, not all of the cables. First, we are going to connect the three faces of the motor, we are going to connect the whole sensors here, and we are going to connect the... Uh, in this case, I have connected a PC to the computer via the USB adapter. Okay, um, how to... Um, manage which color goes with which face and and the cables is uh, it's another thing for another video that I, if it's necessary i will i will make it but uh, in my case you see the colors do not correspond to the same colors of the motor but that's not uh, that's not an issue this uh, it, it can happen in some in some motors okay you have to connect the battery minus here plus here and you have to connect this um, from the pin number seven from this connector which is the pink cable. This is the in order to activate the controller. Okay. Uh, at the same time, I have connected a throttle. Okay. In order to test that the motor turns. Okay. So what we have to do is that check that the motor turns. Okay. It, I have uh, activated the controller. It doesn't matter if the motor turns uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise. It just have to turn. It is important that this first time that you run the motor that you do not accelerate uh, full, just only a little bit, just like this, just to check that it turns. Like I say, it doesn't matter which way it turns, but it turns, okay? And it's important as well that the motor is outside of the vehicle or it is uh, the vehicle is on a stance or something, so the, the vehicle cannot move, okay? That's a very important issue. Both things are important, not to accelerate, uh, to fully accelerate and not, and to have the motor completely loose in order to, to work for the for the programming. If you uh, do not comply with these things, you can have uh, problems on the programming and even you can have uh, some uh, issues because of uh, damaging the controller or damaging the motor shaft or something else. So uh, be careful on this. So now let's go and start the programming. After uh, connecting the motor, uh, and make it uh, run, what we have to do is to open the program with the controller activated. And the first thing we have to do is to make a read of the parameters that the uh, motor has. Uh, sorry, the controller has already uh, in it. Okay, and the first parameters we are going to modify and to adjust are the motor, um, the motor parameters. We will go to this tab, which is called motor, and we will find the first parameters. Okay, the first one is the uh, nominal motor current. Okay, this refers to the current that it's, uh, the motor is going to need to make a phase identification um, angle. Okay, so uh, the, there is uh, different values you can put here and it depends on the size of the motor. I have uh, making some tests and you can use something like 70 for small motors up to something like 500 watts 
and uh, 80 for motors uh, around 2000 watts and 90 for bigger motors okay uh, usually if you don't know exactly what to put here 80 is a quite reasonable uh, value for for this uh, for this setup uh, remember that this is not the current that the motor is going to be working on, it's only uh, for the identification angle, okay? The next parameter is the motor poles, okay? This refers to the number of magnets, okay? Not exactly to the motor poles because uh, it will be the motor poles multiplied by two, but it, it, it equivalates to the number of magnets. Uh, your uh, motor supplier should uh, tell you how many poles your motor has or how many magnets, and if you don't know, you can open the motor and just and just come with them okay next value is the sensor uh, speed sensor type it refers to what kind of uh, sensors your motor has inside uh, usually uh, for motor drives it uses hull sensors which is a uh, model uh, number two of for, for hull sensors but if you are using a servo motor uh, which is called a resolver motor uh, you can you have to put three in here and for if you have a uh, line hole sensors okay so in this case i have a motor with house sensors so i i put it on two and that will work for me the next one it's if you have a motor with a resolver motor then you will have to put here how many sensors the motor has okay uh, the next uh, value is the motor temperature sample what kind of uh, sensor your motor has this controller only uh, can admit two kind of um, of uh, temperature sensors which are uh, he down here which ones uh, you can you can use it's the kt uh, y 80 84 and 130 or 150 and the kt 83 122 Okay, if you have no sensor, in my case, this motor, uh, the sensor it have got inside is not one of those, so I put it in zero, like uh, no sensors. The next four values are um, in order to protect the motor from overheating. Okay, so we can set up here the temperatures and the values we want in order to uh, avoid the motor to overheat. Okay, the first one, it uh, refers when the motor is gonna stop working if the temperature rises this value 130 celsius degrees it's quite uh, reasonable for this kind of motor you can lower it if you are in a um, in a hot uh, area or uh, increase it if you are in a in a cold area but 130 is a quite reasonable value for most of the motors okay uh, the next one the next two ones it's uh it's when the motor is gonna start to decrease its power in order to let it cool okay so uh, and it's got uh, the values by default are 100 and 110 which is again quite reasonable okay and the last value is how much uh, we want to the power to be reduced from the from from the motor in order to let it cool usually uh, it's used 50% uh, what it means is that when the motor reaches 100 uh, degrees the motor is gonna start to uh, decrease its uh, overall power in order to let it cool if it keeps on rising up to 110 degrees then it will reduce 50 uh, percent so it will start to reduce power at 100 and will reach a 50 percent reduction if we put 50 here we can put uh, more values you know higher values or lower values some tests may be need if your motor uh, tends to heat up too much then you can increase this value or or you know it's change it change it by practice it's is a more reasonable but 50 is a quite reasonable value and this 100 110 and 130 are very reasonable values for for a start point okay the next four points are for line hull sensors if your motor has line hull line sensors then you will have to uh, tweak this out i really don't know how to really tweak them but i suppose that the uh, motor manufacturer will let you know how, which values you have to put here and how to make it work okay and the values the next values which are here uh, faded you cannot change it uh, the next uh, values we're gonna tweak now are in the vehicle uh, tab so let's go to the vehicle tab now we're in the vehicle tab okay and uh, the first thing we have to modify or to check it's that uh, the type of throttle here it's the tps type okay it uh, you can use two kind of uh, throttles 
one is uh, the potentiometer throttle, which is uh, number one, or hull uh, throttle. Okay, In, I'm using a hull throttle, so I put uh, number two here. Okay, uh, the next uh, thing you can check here is the uh, maximum frequency output for the phases. Okay. Usually this value is uh, put to the maximum uh, that the controller has. In this case, this controller is up to 1000 Hz. Okay, so we leave it in 1000. If you reduce it, uh, the, the top speed of the motor that can make can be reduced, reduced here. But uh, usually this is um, put to the maximum. If you have uh, or you need a very, very high revolutions uh, per minute motor, motor then uh, you can ask to Kelly controllers when you buy the controller to have a high revolution uh, unit and this can be increased. The next value you can you can check is the push uh, width modulation okay which is here in the in the last one okay it can it can go from uh, from 5 to 20 uh, kilohertz okay as high is this value uh, as efficient will run the motor and as low as it's the value, uh, more efficient will be the, the controller. Okay, so it's a compromise between efficiency between the motor and, and the controller. Okay, and there is another thing that will, uh, if you change this parameter, will change in the motor. If you are using, for example, a half motor like I'm using now, it is quite interesting to use a quite high frequency uh, in order to avoid noise. Okay, but if you are using a, a geared motor, for example, then it will be it will be interesting to use a lower uh, value of frequency because it will make the the controller to run it more efficiently and the incre the increment of noise will be not so noticeable. So I'm using a half motor here, so I just put uh, 20 kilohertz in order to to avoid noise. Uh, because they can become very very noisy if uh, this uh, frequency is very is very low. Okay, the next, the next point is to, now we're going to make the uh, identification angle of the hull sensors. So let's uh, proceed to do so. Now we're going to make the uh, identification angle procedure. Okay, uh, to do so, uh, we just have to change here uh, the value of uh, the, uh, this value, which is, uh, says 85 to 170. Oops, 170. Okay, and after doing so, what we do is to write, to write this command on the controller. We click on write, and it will uh, pop up uh, this and make a sound that it's been accepted and it's correct the, 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 re the write on, on the controller. After that, we check that we make a read again, and we check that the value of 170, it's been uh, ad uh, accepted by the controller. And the next thing we have to do is to quit out of the program. In this case, we just click on quit. We are out. And the next thing we have to do is to uh, disconnect the battery and the, uh, from the controller. We disconnect the battery from the controller. Okay, and the uh, starting uh, pin. Okay, we wait about uh, three seconds in order to let it uh, cool down. And we connect it again, first the, the battery and then the starting uh, pin. Now we will notice that the motor starts to make some little noises and movements. It's important that the motor can uh, move freely in order to do this uh, configuration. Now we have to wait three minutes until it uh, finishes this procedure. So I'm going to stop the video and come back when it's finished. You can notice that the motor uh, makes little noises and turns. Now the three minutes have uh, passed and what we have to do next is to disconnect the battery from the controller and wait for a few seconds until it uh, cools down. Wait some seconds and we reconnect again the battery and the starting uh, pin. And we proceed to open the configuration program. Sometimes it fails and we have to try again.
Okay, now we can check, we, we do a read again, and we can check that the identification angle, we wrote a 170, it's back to 85. That means that the procedure of identification angle has been done success successfully. Okay, so now we can check that the motor turns uh, properly and you can now uh, turn it to full speed without worries because nothing is gonna, is gonna damage anything. Okay, the next uh, thing we have to start to uh, set up is the vehicle parameters that will be done for the next video.